as you probably know, ST Microelectronics changed the all API function for CON, so I wrote a new program for it. I think this uh, version is easier to understand and use, so I'll show it in this tutorial. We open CubeMX, we select the board. STM32 for discovery. Now uh, we clean pinouts. First we select uh, the clock, crystal clock. You may see that uh, it was uh, activated on the pins. Now we select for the PA0 external interrupts zero and uh, we uh, select for the output the pins PD12 to PD15. We activate CAN1 on uh, PB8 and PB9. The press color will have uh, 21 quanta, it means 500 uh, nanoseconds. The first segment we choose 12 times and the second one 4 times. Uh, in uh, the NVIC we select interrupts for Rx0 and uh, now on the NVIC we select the priorities for uh, CAN we select priority 2 and for external interrupts priority 1. We check the clock it is at maximum and uh, now we generate the project we give it a name CN HAL. Now we do generate the code for EWARM. We open the project and uh, we open the files main C, the interrupt C, and uh, from the drivers. First, uh, CANC. Now we start uh, writing the program. In main C, we uh, go to the user code begin 2 and uh, an obvious uh, instruction here is uh, to start CAN. We copy the prototype from the C file and uh, paste it in main C. The parameter is uh, pointer to a structure that uh, we must define in the user code private variables. Uh, we define here as a CN handle structure and we refer to this in the start instruction. We verify the code, everything is all right. Now we uh, activate the interrupts for res reception. Here is a prototype of the function. We copy it in the user code begin to. The first parameter is uh, a pointer to the CAN1 handler. The second one is uh, the flag which we can find as uh, 
cn interrupt in the header file of cn uh, we choose the message pending as an uh, interrupt source and uh, we uh, paste it in the interrupt activation function now in the interrupt uh, file we will um, make a delay a software delay using a loop and uh, then uh, we'll check again if the PA0 pin is uh, still activated to confirm that uh, it was really pressed and not uh, um, glitch well uh, for uh, reading the pin we'll uh, open the ZP GPIO C file and choose read pin function it is a prototype the first parameter is a GPIO port A and the second one is a pin with the syntax given by the prototype of the instruction here is pin 0 now uh, if it uh, really was pressed we uh, increment an 8-bit variable a and uh, then we add a message for transmission with this function so we'll transmit using uh, the CAN1 referring by its handling using a specific header which is a structure that we have to declare in main and we'll refer here to this header then uh, the data it's a single byte so we can refer to it and uh, we'll use a mailbox uh, for transmission variable that we declare as an uh, integer in main and uh, refer to it in this instruction so uh, when uh, uh, PA0 is pressed we'll uh, increase a variable and transmit it through CAN now uh, to construct this uh, structure, this header we copy its name and uh, we dereference it selecting first the member which uh, establish the length number of bytes uh, it can be between 0 and 8 we choose one byte now we the reference again p header and uh, the next member is uh, referring to the type of ID we can find it as a identifier type with control F in the CAN header we choose standard identifier again the reference P header we choose uh, the data type for transmission it may be found 
in the header of TAN, we choose uh, data type now again the referencing p header we will uh, write the standard identifier between 0 and uh, 0x7ff we choose 0x244 for example of course, uh, the variables uh, declared in the main C must be declared in uh, the interrupt file as external to be visible here. And we have also to declare the byte that will be transmit in uh, main and uh, in the interrupt routine we check again everything uh, is correct after compilation uh, and now we can um, use uh, the reception function get eric's message in the can1 Eric IRQ handler. We copy the prototype. We refer to the same HCAN1 handler. Uh, the second parameter is uh, the number of uh, FIFO. We find it in the header file and we choose uh, FIFO0. The third parameter is a header structure. We must declare it in main. We name it uh, PRX header and uh, put it as an external variable in the interrupt sub subroutine also. We'll uh, use it as uh, the third parameter in the get Eric's message function as a pointer. And uh, now an uh, 8 bit variable which uh, will store the received uh, byte. Of course, we declare it in both files. Now, this uh, octet uh, should be displayed on the user LEDs on uh, GPOD output data register. Uh, starting with uh, PD12, so it must be shifted 12 bits to left. Now I compile everything to check, and uh, it seems to be all right. We have to filter the messages using uh, a filter with a configuration function. So uh, we'll declare this function. The second parameter is a pointer to a sfilter config structure. We'll declare this structure here, CAN filter type definition, sfilter config. And uh, now we uh, have to build this structure which is referred to in the config file routine. 
the first parameter is of course a pointer to the hcan1. So the sfilter config structure should be dereferentiated. First uh, FIFO assignment parameter will find it in the header we should use the uh, 540 filter again the referentiating s filter config we choose the identifier the high byte it will be another one zero is two four five for example but must be shifted five bits to the left according to the uh, reference manual the lower part may be zero and so uh, the mask identifiers should be zero as uh, the default uh, type of uh, filter is uh, list, not mask. Now we shall um, establish the scale of the file filter. Again, we look for it in uh, the header file. We choose the 32-bit alternative. Again, the referencing S config, we should activate this filter. The options may be found in the description of the parameter. So we enable the activation. Now we have to uh, cut the optimization which would uh, eliminate the four cycle for delay and uh, compile and download it in the board. For the second board we should uh, use uh, the identifiers inverse 0x245 for transmission and uh, 0x244 for reception. As you may see, both boards can transmit and receive the data. Lately, besides my main work in quantum electrodynamics, in my spare time I was interested in making projects using the new star in the Internet of Things arena, the Wi-Fi ESP microcontroller. As a result, I wrote a book which covers about uh, 20 programs for uh, IoT using ESP32 and it was recently published on Amazon, Lulu and Linpub. I hope it will help me to remember next month or next year how I did what I did in IoT. I am going to publish some videos that briefly explain the cinematic part of such projects, especially the testing while the full explanations of the programs may be read from this book. As the time needed for watching such videos is often too long, you may simply copy the programs from the electronic edition of the book, as I suspect my students did, and paste them into your project. They will surely work.